praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Lord, speak to our heart by the power of the Holy Spirit this morning. We want to hear Jesus. We preach Jesus this morning. We want the Lord to speak to our heart. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for um, your son. We thank you for he becoming poor that we might become rich, spiritually rich. We thank you, Father, that your son Jesus came in flesh and blood as we are, but were yet without sin. And Father, we thank you that he could have called 12 legions of angels, but he laid down his life and took it up again on the third day according to scripture, taking the keys of hell and death victorious for the world. Be of a good cheer, he said. I've overcome the world. Our sins and iniquities and transgressions are all forgiven by your son Jesus, as he offered his blood once in the holy place for the sins of the world. We thank you, Father, that we have been reconciled to you by your son Jesus. We ask now for your help this morning to rather divide the word of truth for your name's sake, for your word's sake, for your people's sake. We thank you this morning, Father God, for everyone in the house of God, the house of prayer. We thank you for anyone on Facebook and TikTok, Instagram, who may be watching it. We thank God for you all. We pray that the word of God will come forth and speak to your heart this morning. Yes. That we be purged and cleansed and washed by the water of the word, our hearts and our mind. We thank you, Lord, for rebuking the, the devourer for our sake. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. You'll be seated in the presence of the Lord. Good morning to each and every one of you. Open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. We will be here for a very long time. First Corinthians, we preach Christ. We, we preach Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1 again, verse 17. As I continue to reset, reiterate, uh, reemphasize the foundation on why we preach Christ in these last days, these perilous times that we're living in, these dangerous times that we're living in. We should preach Christ, amen? amen? For this is his church. He purchased this church with his blood, amen? The Bible tells us in Acts 20, praise God, and the gates of hell should not prevail against it if we preach Christ in the church, amen? Amen. amen. First Corinthians 1 and 17. The Apostle Paul, amen, he says, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. What is the gospel? Good news. What is the good news? Jesus Christ, amen. Mm -hmm. His death, his burial, his resurrection. For it is the power of God, amen. That's the good news. And that's why we preach the gospel. We preach Christ crucified. We preach Christ. Listen now. Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of non-effect or no effect. Amen? amen. Praise God. The, the, the gospel of, amen, uh, uh, the, the cross of Christ. We can't have it of no effect where a souls are not being saved. I mean, the cross is, is of no effect when, it, when it's when no one is, is being coming to the uh, salvation of the Lord. Amen? amen? Why? For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. The preaching of the cross is the power of God. He demonstrated his power at, the, at Calvary, amen? amen? He laid down his life. He took it up again, taking the keys of hell and death, graves opening, people going back into the city, amen? He spoke to over 500 at once. He, he showed himself to many. He, he performed signs and miracles and wonders after his resurrection. It is the power of God. Amen. The preaching of the, uh, of the cross, amen, to us that are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. Verse 24, but unto them which are called, I'm sorry, verse 23, we preach Christ crucified. See? But he did, he, he was crucified. He did hang on that cross for you and I. He remained on that cross for you and I. Amen. There were nails in his hands and in his feet, a sword in his side for you and I. We preach Christ crucified. Amen. He died, amen. amen. Into his hand, he commended his, his spirit unto the Father. He was dead and buried. So we preach Christ crucified. 
but unto the Jews a stumbling block, and the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, you and I, we are saved and we are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Amen. Preaching the cross, Calvary, is the power of God and it's the wisdom of God. Amen. Because Christ, amen, defeated Satan, amen, at Calvary. That, that was the wisdom of God. Satan thought he had won. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. They thought they had won, but it was the wisdom of God. It was the power of God and the wisdom of God demonstrated at the cross of Christ. Amen? Yeah. And so therefore, we're going to preach Christ. We're going to preach it, the gospel, the apostle Paul says. We're going to preach the good news. We're going to preach Christ crucified. Yeah. Chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians and verse 2, the apostle Paul says there, I'm determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's all we need to know. All, all we don't want to call that Jesus Christ and him crucified. The body of Christ, the church of God. Amen. We must be on one accord that Jesus Christ, amen, is the son of the living God and he was crucified for the sins of the world. Amen. Look at verse 4. And my speech and my preaching, the Apostle Paul says, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. You, wanna, you, want, uh, you want the preacher to preach with a demonstration of the Holy Spirit. It's the, it's the anointing, it's the power of God that will remove birds and, and, and break yokes, amen? It's, it's, the, it's the spirit of God, amen, that must be with the, the, with the minister who's preaching and teaching the word, amen? It must be a demonstration of the spirit on the preaching and the teaching, amen? That's all the apostle Paul wanted to know. Jesus Christ and him crucified. And his preaching and his, 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 his speeches were not with enticing word, but a demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So we preach Christ. We will continue to preach Christ. Amen? Amen? For it is the power of God. And we can't be ashamed, the Bible tells us, of the gospel in, in Romans chapter 1. We can't be ashamed of the gospel. Amen? You know what the Bible tells us? Yeah. yeah, Romans 1 and 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen? We can't be ashamed of the gospel because what? Amen? In Hebrews 2, amen, and verse 11, Jesus Christ, it says there, he's not ashamed to be called our brethren. Hebrews 2 and 11, we're not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God and the salvation. Therefore, we're going to preach Christ. We're not ashamed of the gospel. Hebrews 2 and 11, Jesus is not ashamed to call us his brethren. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Even though he knows everything about us, he's not ashamed. Glory. But even more so, in Hebrews 11, 16, the scripture says there that God is not, amen, ashamed to be called our God. Hallelujah. Amen. There was, uh, I believe a couple of times in the Old Testament, God wanted to destroy all of them. <laughs> Back up, Moses, I'm going to start over with you. But now God is not ashamed because of what? The cross of Christ. Because of the blood of our, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's not ashamed to be called our God. Let us not be ashamed of our Father. Let us not be ashamed of our Savior. Let us not be ashamed of, our, of the gospel, amen? The good news. So let us preach Christ. Preaching Christ is not about holding a mic. Preaching Christ is for everyone who's a child of God, who's a son or daughter of God, who's an ambassador for Christ. Amen? Amen. For telling, telling others about the good news of Jesus Christ, that, that the cross of Christ is the what? It's the power of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen? Why we're not ashamed? For hope maketh us not ashamed. Romans 5 and 5. 
Romans 5 and 5. Hope maketh us not ashamed. And who is that hope? Jesus is that hope. First Timothy 1 and 1. It tells us that clearly that Jesus Christ is our hope. I'm not turning that to today. First Timothy 1 and 1. Write it down if you're listening. First Timothy 1 and 1. Jesus Christ is our hope. So hope maketh us not ashamed. Amen? Amen. amen. The Bible tells us, amen, about faith in Corinthians. Faith, you have to turn now. Faith, hope, and love. Now that, that passage uh, means more to me now. That, that verse, I understand it now. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Amen. Amen. Faith, the Bible tells us, is the suffering of things hoped for. What, what do we hope for? Christ's return. Amen. And, 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 and that, that hope is Christ. Right? Amen. Christ is our hope. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Why is love, if Christ is our hope, why is the greatest of these love? Why, you know why? Because God is love. God is love. Faith, hope, and love. Now, amen, praise God that he, he's instructing, he's teaching us, amen, amen, that we can understand these passages throughout the Bible when we preach Christ. Christ is tied all up together for us. And he's not ashamed to be called our brother. He's not ashamed to be called our God. Amen? This hope that we, amen, uh, amen, that, uh, that is Jesus Christ, that the Bible tells us in, in 1 Peter and, and 3 and uh, uh, 15, be always ready to give an answer to every man that asks you, asks you a reason of the hope that is in you. Are you ready to give a reason? Are you ready to give an answer of that hope that's in you? Understanding that that hope is Jesus Christ. Are you ready, instant, in season and out of season, to give an answer? Can you give a, an answer that could, amen, uh, uh, lead someone to salvation, to Christ, amen? We need, we need to know more that, oh, he's the son of God. We need to be able now, as mature Christians, amen, say for many years now, call for many years now, we should be at a level that we can give an answer now. We can, amen, we can, uh, we can almost preach a sermon on Jesus, amen? Be ready, saints, to, to, to give an answer. That's what the scripture says in 1 Peter uh, 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 3 and 15. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that's asking you a reason of the hope that is in you. Are you ready? As we live in these perilous and dangerous times, when someone asks you about your Lord and Savior, someone asks you about the church, someone asks you about your the Bible or your cross, your Amen. If someone just just open a door, be ready. In season, Amen. And out of season, amen? This hope that's in us. And every man, John, 1 John 3 and 3, every man that has this hope in him, see, this hope in us, Christ is that hope. And every man that has this hope in him, 1 John 3 and 3, purifies himself. See, your body is the temple of the living God. So you purify yourself. How do you purify yourself? Reading and studying this word, washing yourself with this word, saturate your heart and mind with this word. That's how you purify yourself. How do you purify yourself? Having a daily conversation with God and meaning in prayer. Amen. That's how you purify yourself. How you be, how you purify yourself? That's not being a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. That's how you purify yourself. So everyone, praise God, that has this hope in him, that has Christ in him, I mean, he purifies himself even as he is pure. Do we understand how pure Christ is? He was yet without sin. And that's the, that's the goal. 
to live a life without sin. That's the goal every day, amen, that we open our eyes. Every day that the Lord gives us another breath, the goal is, amen, to purify ourselves uh, even as he is pure and we know he was without sin. That's the goal. Amen? Amen. We preach Christ. Praise God. I thank God uh, for you this morning. We're looking at, we began last week, week before last, looking at the Apostle Peter. But we began in the um, in First King. Let us go back there and look quickly and we're going to move forward and we're going to, amen, go as far as we can looking at the Apostle Peter. Amen. Pertaining to preaching Christ and and his ministry. First Kings 18. First Kings chapter 18. And verse 1 and 2, and it reads, It came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Amen. Elijah got a word from the Lord. Verse 17. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Are thou he that troubleth Israel? Amen. See, when you are the a uh, uh, man of God, when you are the woman, a person of God who, who is preaching Christ, amen, those in your circle of life, those in high places will cause you, will, will uh, 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 accuse you of being a troubler, amen, because you're preaching Christ, you're living for Christ. So Ahab the king said unto Elijah, are thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and have followed Baal. Amen? And so now you, we know that Elijah is going to challenge Ahab and Jezebel to a contest of their prophets. And he says here in, in verse 19, Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal 450, and the prophet of the grown 400, which eat at Jezebel's table, and Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel, and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto them. He came unto all the people. And he said, how long halt ye between two opinions? How long will you waver between two opinions? Amen. If we're going to preach Christ, saints, how long will we waver between two opinions? Amen. If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. Amen? How long haunt you? How long will you waver between two opinions? And we began a couple of weeks ago looking at the, uh, 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 the life of the apostle uh, uh, Peter. Amen? Because we're focusing on that phrase, how long will you waver between two opinions? If, if we preach Christ, we can't waver between two opinions. If God be God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. Amen? Amen. If we are the children of the light, stay in the light. Mm -hmm. If we are children of the day, stay in the day. We can't go back into those dark places. Amen? Amen. Where we once, amen, Shake, 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 you know. We can't go back. We can't halt between two opinions. We're children of the light. We must uh, walk in the light. Jesus, the light of the world. If, 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 if the Lord be God, we're going to follow him. And if Baal, we didn't follow him. But we can't waver, saints. In these last days that we're living in, we can't waver between two opinions. I mean, what's the opinion? Should I read my Bible? Nah, I don't know. Should I pray this morning? Everything seems good. I'm feeling good. Huh? Well, you know. See, you're wavering between two opinions. Should I do good? When the Bible says, if you know, you know to do good and you don't, it's sin. We, we can't waver between two opinions. Should I forgive? When the Bible says we should forgive. Yeah. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. 
So we feed the poor and the hungry and the needy, the fatherless and the widows. When Jesus says, what you done to the least of them, you done it unto me. Yeah. Can, can we, uh, would we waver between two opinions? If the Lord be God, if Jesus be God, follow him. And if they are ready and you, uh, you follow him. But lukewarmness, the Bible says in Revelation, but lukewarm, what, would he, what, what, what the Lord is going to do? He's going to vomit you out of his mouth. See, uh, one's, one that's wavering is, is the lukewarm. And, and, and in Revelation, I believe, chapter 3, he says he will uh, uh, vomit that, that church, that, that uh, 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 those uh, uh, in that time out of his mouth. Amen? So let's not waver. Let's, let's have this, this, this zeal with knowledge. Amen? This hunger and this thirst after knowledge. Amen? So now Peter, in Matthew 4, you just write it down. We're not going to be there long. I'm, I'm trying to move fast because I've gone over this several times. But Matthew 4, amen, Jesus came walking, amen, and saw Peter and, and his uh, brother and, and asked them to follow him. And immediately we know uh, Peter, what? He immediately left his father, amen. You know what the Bible says? He left his father and he left all. And Jesus says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And straightway he left their nest and followed him. Amen? Peter and Andrew, and also James and John. They immediately, immediately left their father and followed Christ in Matthew 4. He said, I will make you fishers of men. In Luke 5 and verses 1 through 11, Jesus again called them. Amen? Mm -hmm. They were fishing. I thought they left their fishing boats and nets. But now, see, now they're back fishing. See what I'm saying? We can't waver between two opinions. Peter, James, John, Andrew, they left their fishing, and they left their nest, they left their boats. But here we have them now in Luke chapter 5. They're fishing again. Amen? Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus said to them, Amen, to launch out into the deep. And we know they caught a great uh, uh, catch of fish, and the boats began to see. Amen. And, and, and Peter came and said unto the Lord, Amen, in verse 8. He said, he fell down at the Jesus' knees and depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Amen. 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 Now look at verse 10. There were also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, with the partners with Simon. See, they all returned back to fishing. And Jesus said unto Simon, fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch fish. In Matthew 4, he said, I will make you a fisher of men. In Luke 5, he said, now you shall catch fish. You ever took someone with you fishing and didn't catch a fish? Mm -hmm. Amen? If you take me with you fishing, I guarantee you, you will not catch a fish. <laughs> it's like the fish say, no, he, he's not smart enough. We smarter than that guy. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> but now Jesus said, I will, you will catch men. Not just be a fisher of men, you will catch men. Amen. That was the elevation, amen? Not just uh, make you fishers of men, but now you shall catch men as we are, praise the Lord, uh, uh, as we preach Christ, as we preach Christ, we shall catch men. That's the bait. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We shall catch men. Amen? So, amen. Now go to uh, in Matthew 16, Peter. Wow. So Peter wavering, he's, he gave up his shipping and boating, fishing equipment, and he returned to it. Amen. Wavering between two opinions in Matthew 16 and Amen. Verses 13 through 19. 
Jesus asked his disciples, who, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Verse 13, and, uh, um, and they answered, some John the Baptist in verse 14, Elias and Jeremiah. But then he, Jesus became more pointed in his question. And he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Do you have an answer? Are you ready to give an answer of this hope that's in you? When someone asks you who, who Jesus is, Jesus himself asked the, his disciples, whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Solomon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Not only Simon by Jonah revealed it from the Father, but every one of us that are saved and called, the Father by the Holy Spirit revealed that to us. Amen? Yeah. And that's why I, we are saved and called now. That's why all of our sins are forgiven. That's why our name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen? That's why we are we have our eternal inheritance and eternal salvation from Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Listen now. Let's keep going now. Because we, we, we're talking about wavering between two opinions. What a wonderful uh, 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 revelation that Simon Bar Jonah Peter received from the Father. And verse 18, Peter, I mean, sorry, the, the Lord said unto Peter, Thou art Peter, he got a name change, and upon this rock, this revelation, yeah. not Peter. Mm -hmm. I had a discussion last week with a, with a Christian man that for over an hour he won't, he and I were discussing, he was saying, amen, it, it, the rev, that, that Peter is what we're building the church on. I'm like, you got to be kidding me, man. But I, I, I was ready to give an answer. Amen. See, of the hope that was in me. And, 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 and after, amen, uh, uh, an hour of uh, 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 sharing scriptures and, and listening and, 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 and sharing passages, amen, he, he, he agreed in his way. You know how sometimes it's hard for the Christian to agree. When the truth is right there in front of me, he agreed. I took it as an agreement, amen, because I, I know him and I understand him, that, that Jesus, amen, that, that it was the revelation that Peter received, not Peter himself. Yeah. Amen? Yes, Peter didn't die for us. Amen. Amen. amen? Peter's not coming again for us. Peter has not going to prepare a place for us. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. See, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When we don't waver between two opinions. When we preach Christ, when we don't waver between two opinions, the gates of hell shall not prevail. We'll not overcome the church of God and the people of God. Amen? Because we are the church of God. And when we, uh, when we don't waver between two opinions, and when we continually preach Christ and live for Christ in our life, the gates of hell will not prevail against you and I. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven. Not just any set of keys. The keys to the kingdom of heaven. And, and what are those keys? It's the, it's the key of knowledge. And it's the keys of prayer. Let's go on. Amen. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That, that's prayer. We have the key of knowledge. You'll find that in Luke 11, 50, uh, 46 and 47 and verse 52. You can write that down. Luke 11, verse 46 and 47 and verse 52. That, that's, the, that's the keys to the kingdom. Knowledge. See, and that's why we preach Christ. Because again, when we have this knowledge, and Jesus wants everybody to come into the knowledge of the truth. Isn't that what the Bible says? Yeah. See, that's the key to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So that's why, therefore, we have to preach Christ. Because that's the key to the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven. 
which will keep us from wavering between two opinions because we have a, a key to the kingdom. So I'm going I'm, I'm to continue to preach Christ so that everyone, amen, who listens in at United Covenant House of Prayer, everyone will, will have an opportunity to have a key. Amen. <laughs> that they can get into the kingdom of heaven Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Because you have a key. Amen. You have the key. You can't wait this Sunday or Wednesday to come here and get a key. You need, you need to be laying on Jesus' bosom today. Yeah. Jesus loves me today. The one that Jesus, whom Jesus loved is you and I. Glory. And I have that key. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So Peter had this wonderful revelation from the Father. That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes. Well, let's just keep reading. Look at verse 21. Look, Matthew 16, 21. And from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem, suffer many things of the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him. He took him. Hey, come here, dude. Come here, man. Let me talk to you. Come here. I can, I can, I can envision Peter taking Jesus by the apple. He, he pulled him aside for, for James and John and Andrew. He said, come, gee, come here, man. He took him. Get this picture. He took him and began to re What? Did the Bible say rebuke him? Oh, my God. Oh my God. Peter took Jesus and began to rebuke him. Saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this should not be unto thee. This after he received this revelation from the Father that Jesus is the Christ. See how, you, see how we waver between two opinions? But we got to continue to preach Christ. He, 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 took, he took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this should not be unto thee. It's not going to happen. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. See? Mm -hmm. Say don't care what kind of revelation you get today. Mm -hmm. Say don't care what kind of understanding and wisdom you get today. Mm -hmm. He ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now Jesus didn't call Peter Satan. Right. He knew what Peter was saying was influenced by Satan. Yes. Amen? Yes. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Oh, I know sometimes we think, oh, no, there's no way I can be used by Satan. <laughs> Satan can't do nothing with this hell. <laughs> Don't we feel like that? <laughs> what he did with Peter? <laughs> right in the presence of the Lord. Yes. Yes. You don't ever think, because you have read your Bible that day, you, you, you prayed that morning, Amen. And, 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 and you meditated and, 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 and you came to church twice that week. That, that now, hey, I'm untouchable. I ain't, I ain't hear nothing. Everything I hear is, is from heaven. When it's really from Satan. Mm -hmm. But he turned and said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Mm -hmm. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those things that be of men. Yeah. See how we can, we can, we, even though Peter would, Peter would just preach, <clears throat> preach to but about Christ by God. Glory. It's one thing to hear from a minister of God. Peter heard it from God. Amen. See, God 
preach Christ. I'm going to get there soon enough. And yet we can hear it, but we can still wait from it. Jesus says, oh, Peter, not here, but in another passage, Satan desires to sift you as wheat, man. He'll see that's what he do. He'll use you to say things, to do things in the name of the Lord, but all the while he's trying to kill you. Mm -hmm. Satan, uh, uh, Satan desires to sift you as wheat, but I pray for you. Lord, Lord, when thou art converted, <laughs> encourage, go tell your friend, go, go preach Christ. Let's not waver between two opinions about who the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is. Amen? Mm -hmm. Peter, Peter, he's wavering. But that's okay. Let's go to the, to the, to the good now for Peter. All right. In John 6 and, and, and verse, amen, 64. After Jesus had, had taught, amen, a wonderful something about he's he been the, the bread of life. Mm -hmm. Must eat of him and drink of him his blood. And men had turned back. And Jesus, amen, looked at uh, uh, his disciples in verse 64. I got to go quickly. He says, amen, there are some of you that believe. I'm sorry. Verse 64, yeah. Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore I say unto you that no man can come unto me and accept it were given unto him of my father. And from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Wow. See, they were wavering. Mm -hmm. they, they heard something they couldn't understand, they couldn't receive. And they, they went back, amen, because Jesus is preaching Christ himself. He's the bread of life. Your father did eat manna in the wilderness and they died. See? Most didn't give that truth, but the true bread is Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and they, 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 they couldn't receive that, and they, 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 the Bible says they, they, walked, they went back and walked no more with him. Mm. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter, here we go again. Answering him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Not where shall we go? To whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Yeah. Lord. That's why we preach Christ. Yes. These words are words of eternal life. Mm -hmm. So we're going to preach Christ and him crucified. And we believe and we are sure yes. that thou art the, that Christ. We've got to be fully convinced, fully persuaded, believe and sure. To keep us, and what keeps us from, from wavering between two opinions. When you believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's Peter. He's on it. Amen? Yeah. Then write this down. I'm not going now. At Jesus at rest, we all know what Peter did. He denied he knew Jesus. See how you go back and forth? Back and forth. We preach Christ one day and the next day we waver between two opinions. Now here, here, here we are. It's the second time Peter said that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. So now Jesus is arrested. Matthew 26, 69 through 75. Amen. I'm not going there. Matthew 26, verse 69 through 75. Peter denied Jesus three times. Did he not? We know it very well. Amen. Amen. I don't need to read those verses. Amen. He denied him three times. I know not the man. I don't know the man. I told you I don't know that man. <laughs> From a little maid. Your voice, your accent give you away. No, I know it don't. I don't know the man. And the Bible says, Jesus turned and looked at him and he went out and weeping bitterly. Yes, yes. Jesus heard him. How do you know Jesus hear everything we say? He hears everything, every word that comes about our mouth. We have to give an account of, amen? amen. We hear, he hears us, amen, just like he heard Peter. Mm -hmm. He turned and looked at him. Praise the Lord. But we're going to continue to preach Christ. Yes. But 
Well, after his resurrection, Jesus rose up in Mark chapter 16, verse 7. He told Mary Magdalene, amen, go and tell my disciples and Peter, I'll meet him in Galilee. Amen. We may waver, Jesus never waver. Our faith never may waver, but Jesus will always remain faithful. Go to tell my disciples and Peter. See? He will never leave us nor forsake us. He met him by the Sea of Galilee, fishing. Jesus, they bite fishing again, John 21. I'm not going now. So he, Peter fishing again. And, and Jesus, amen, walks up. They caught nothing. Jesus again blessed them. They come to shore with many fish. Jesus already had prepared the meal in John 21. And what did Jesus do? Peter, love thou me. Feed my lamb. Peter, love thou me. Agape me. Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed me sheep. Peter, love us, thou me, God paid me. Yes, Lord. Peter felt bad because the Lord asked him three times. Love us, thou me. Feed me lamb. Feed me sheep. Feed me lamb. Yes, Lord. You know us. I love thee. God will never leave us nor forsake us. If we waver, if we caught between two opinions, if we, amen, amen, fall short of the glory of God, amen, God will never leave us nor forsake us. We just got to do what? Continue to preach Christ. Amen. 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 Go on over to Acts now. In chapter 2. Peter first sermon after the Holy Spirit came down in, 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 at Pentecost. I mean, Peter, his first sermon. How many got saved? We know. How many got saved that first sermon? 3,000, right. 3,000 souls got saved. Amen. Peter was doing what? He preached Christ. Amen. Peter preached Christ his first sermon, and 3,000 got saved. Amen. And I, I'm not standing there long. In, in, in Acts chapter 15. One of the most important chapters in the Bible, I was told. Because it was dealing with the Gentiles coming into the church and whether they should be circumcised and, and maintain the law of Moses. Amen. Okay. And all the big preachers were there. Paul and Barnabas and Peter and, and James, the Lord's uh, brother. They were all there. Amen. But we're focusing on Peter this morning. Amen. And in and, and Acts chapter 15 and, and verse 7. Look at verse 7. Acts 15 and verse 7. And, 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 and it reads, and when there had been much disputing. Amen. And well, that was a much agreement. When it, because there was much disputing. Who rose up? Peter rose up. And said unto them. Who he said unto? Paul, Barnabas, James, all of Christ's disciples, all that were in the upper room at, at Pentecost, amen. Yeah. He, he said to uh, unto them, men and brethren, you know how that a, a good while ago, see, some, some time had passed by. A good while ago, God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth even though he was a Jew, he was a, an apostle to the, to the Jews, but the Gentiles by my mouth, Peter said, see, he preaching Christ even to the Gentiles. I know Paul the apostle to the, to the Gentiles, but he preached to the Jews also. Peter the apostle to the Jews, but he preached also to the, uh, to the Gentiles. Amen? Amen? He said, uh, uh, God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. See, hear the word of the gospel. What's the gospel? The good news. What's the good news? Jesus Christ. Amen. His death and burial and resurrection. Jesus Christ and him crucified. And they believed and were what? Were saved. Yes. And God, for faith, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. See, that's the witness that God has received you when he gives you the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the witness. 
that you are saved, that, amen, you're sealed, the Holy Ghost seals you, amen, for eternity unto the Lord, amen? That's the, that's the witness. So Peter is here, what? Preaching Christ crucified. And everyone agreed. The Bible says in verse 25, Acts 15 and 25, amen, this is how you want to run a meeting, a church meeting, amen, a pastor's meeting, a, 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 a deacon's meeting, amen. It, 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 verse 25 says, it seemed good to us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. It seemed good to us. You want an agreement between, amen, the men and the people of God. But not only you, it seemed good unto us, amen, verse 20, it said it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. Now that's what really matters. Yes. <laughs> it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. It can't just uh, seem good unto the, uh, 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 the apostles, amen, to the pastor, to the deacons, and to the church leadership. It's got, it doesn't seem good to the Holy Ghost yeah. and to us. Praise the Lord. Peter is preaching up something. Peter is preaching, man, to the Gentiles, to the Jews. Cornelius came to him, and amen, and all just all sorts of stuff, and, and he preached and, and, and led them to Christ. Amen? So he knows that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He knows that. He, 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 he said it twice in the Gospels. He, he's ministered, amen, we're all the way down, halfway through the book, more than halfway through the book of Acts, and he's still preaching Christ crucified to the Jew and to the Gentile. Right? Okay. Go to Galatians. Chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. We preach Christ. We can't waver between two opinions. When we preach Christ, when we live for Christ, when we serve Christ, no matter who's in our company. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 11. Now, Peter, when Peter was come to Antioch, the Apostle Paul here said, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. We know this passage of scripture. For before that certain came from James, when a certain came from James, who was a church leader, he, Jesus' half-brother, he did eat with the Gentile. Peter did eat with the Gentile. But when they were come, those that were with James, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision, the Jews. And the other Jews Disassembled likewise with him. He took a crowd with him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Who else took a crowd from God out of heaven? Satan. A third of the angels went with him. Mm -hmm. Amen? So now here's Peter. Amen? Disassembled. Amen? He separated himself. Amen? From the, from the Gentiles. When, it's, when those of the circumcision uh, were in the crowd. And, and other Jews also. December likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas, yes. Barnabas, our beloved Barnabas, what was Barnabas name? The son of encouragement. Yes. Even Barnabas. See what, see what happened when you are waving between two opinions, how it can affect the other brothers and the sisters in the church? Yes. And these are, not, these are not new Christians. Barnabas. Also is carried away with this hypocrisy, dissimulation, or hypocrisy. And the Apostle Paul goes on and says, but when I saw that they walked not uprightly, according to the truth of the gospel, see, that's what matters. When someone is not walking uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, and what's the gospel? The good news. What's the good news? That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. When I saw they walked not up right there, according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all. I need to call a private meeting. Mm -hmm. See, some things have to be addressed right there. Because what Peter did was not uprightly according to the gospel. And, and it must be known publicly, amen, that praise the Lord, 
that this is not acceptable. We're preaching Christ. We can't have one of the, the church's leaders. Amen? We can't have a church leader with this hypocrisy. Persuading and influencing others, even Barnabas. Our beloved Barnabas was carried away. So Paul dealt with it. He said, he said unto Peter before them all, If thou being a Jew, livest after the man of the Gentiles, as not as do the Jews, why compare the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Amen? Amen. If thou being a Jew, livest after the man of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compare thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? You don't, he's saying, you don't, you're not even keeping the law. That's what he's telling Peter. Peter, you don't mind keeping the law. Why are you compelling the Gentiles to live as a Jew? To live as a Jew means to keep the law. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. To live as a Jew means to keep the law. And Paul is telling him, why, why, why are you, amen, uh, 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 compelling the Gentiles to live as the Jews when you are not even living as a Jew? <laughs> Verse 15, we who, by, we who are Jews by nature are not Sinners of the Gentile, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. See, that is, but by faith of Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeah. Amen. We're not justified by the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. But the point we're making today, amen, is that we don't waver between two opinions. We want to preach Christ. Yeah. Peter was doing what was uh, uh, comfortable. Mm -hmm. While he was with the Gentiles, he sat and ate with the Gentiles. When the, when, the, when the Jews appeared, he, he ran out and sat with the Jews, the circumcision. He waved from between two opinions. It, it, either Christ crucified, amen, and through his crucifixion, he, he fulfilled all the Levitical priesthood ceremonies and, and amen, and rituals and amen, all the law, all the Old Testament law. Either he did or he did. Amen. And we've learned from uh, 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 studying, um, Expository, studying the book of Galatians and Colossians and Hebrews and Romans, that he has fulfilled all of that. Amen. And we're not going back and forth. We're just going to preach Christ Amen. and him crucified. Amen. Amen. Give God a praise. <laughs> yeah, we're going to preach Christ and him crucified. We can't continue to go back and forth. Amen. Amen. Our circumcision is where? In the heart. In the heart. And verse 21 says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Amen? For if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Let's not frustrate the grace of God by wavering between two opinions. Let us continue to preach Christ. Let us continue to live for Christ. Amen? We're not going to frustrate the grace of of God. We got we gotta we gotta be fully committed and devoted and loyal. Amen. Amen. Now let's go all the way back. Go all the way back to first King chapter 19 this time. First King 19. We're gonna look at Elijah again. Elisha and Elijah, real quickly. First King 19. And verse 19. First King 19 and 19. Amen. Elijah was told by the Lord to go find Elisha. So he departed then and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plying with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he with the 12, <laughs> and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. Do you see that? He passed by and cast his mantle upon him. So what is it? He passing his ministry. Amen? Like, like Paul was doing with Timothy. He, he passed and he cast his mantle upon him. And, and he left the oxen. See, Elisha knew what that meant. So he left the oxen and ran after Elijah. See, Elijah was begging and pleading and, 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 and taking time to explain things. Hey, you know who I am. Amen. I'm Elijah, the, the prophet of God. I, I passed my mantle on to you. And he must have just kept walking off. 
Because Elijah had to, to run and, and asked Elijah, and he said unto Elijah, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, then I, then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again. For what, I, what have I done to thee? Huh. Well, go back. And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen, listen now, and slew them and bore their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave them to the people and they did eat. And then he rose up, went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Amen? He ministered unto him. Now go to Second Kings. Chapter 2. Second King chapter 2. If we're going to preach Christ, we're not going to waver between two opinions. Unless you return, kissed your father and mother, prepared a meal, and, and went and followed Elisha. Amen? Amen? And so now we find ourselves here in Second Kings uh, chapter 2. Uh, and Elisha, the Bible says, let's read in verse 1. It came to pass when the Lord would take Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Amen? Mm -hmm. So you have to be committed, devoted, Lord. Elisha told, Elijah told him to remain here, for the Lord has, amen, sent me to Bethel. And, and, and Elisha said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And we got to have that same hunger and zeal and love and thirst toward our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord would take away thy master from thy head today? See, so a number of people knew of this, this was going on cure today, that day. How? I guess the Lord revealed it to them. Uh, Elijah must have told them. But they told Elisha, do you know that, amen, the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, yeah, I know it. You hold your peace. And Elisha said unto Elijah, said unto Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And again, Elisha said, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. Are we following the Lord? In such a manner, are we committed, devoted, and loyal? Will you also go away, Jesus, like his disciples? To whom shall we go? Let us continue to follow the Lord. As we preach Christ and him crucified, we got to stay close to the Lord. Amen? Amen. We're going to get there. Let's hold on. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho, listen, more people know. They came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord would take away thy master from thy head today? And he, he answered, Yeah, Lord, hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. He said, As the Lord liveth, and as thou so liveth, I will not leave thee. And the two went on. Amen. And it's verse 7, and the 50 men of the son of the prophets went and stood to view a fall. See, they know it's about to happen. Are we, you know, we are in our last day. Do I, are we, amen, looking unto heaven? Are we looking up? Uh, can we see the prophet being fulfilled? Can, do we know that the Lord is coming back soon? Amen. These men, 50 men of the sons of the prophets, they stood to view a fall and they stood by the Jordan. Because they know the Lord is about to do something. They know that the Lord is coming to get Elijah. Amen. I pray that we are in tune with the Spirit of God today. That we know that we're living in the last of the last days. And the Lord is near his return. Amen. Amen. And Elijah took his mantle. And wrapped it together and smoked the water. And they were divided hither and thither so that they went over on dry ground. Elijah and Elisha went over on dry ground, not muddy ground. The ground was dry. And it came to pass, verse 9, that when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. 
Hallelujah. What, what are we asking the Lord for in our prayers? What are we asking the Lord for in our prayers day by day? Are we asking for more of him? Let us, amen, ask the Lord for more of the keys to the kingdom. What did Solomon ask for when the Lord came to him by night? And asked Solomon, what will you have me to do? What did Solomon ask for? He asked for wisdom to lead God people. Are we asking for wisdom that the Lord will give a, 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 a liberally upbraid is not? The Bible says, if any of you lack anything, amen, ask God. If any of you lack wisdom, ask God. But you can't ask wavering because a double-minded man, what? Receives nothing. So church, I want to I, I remind you, what are we asking the Lord for in our prayer? The Bible says, amen, you have not because you ask not. Some of us are not even asking. But if you are asking, ask like Solomon. Ask for wisdom, for it pleased the Lord. And he gave, you didn't ask for the death of your enemies. You didn't ask for riches and long life. Amen. And because Solomon didn't ask for any of that, but wisdom to lead God people in and out. Amen. God gave him a long life. God made Solomon the richest man ever. Amen. And God defeated all of Solomon's enemies. Amen. I pray, sir, church, that we begin to ask God for the things of God. What did Jesus say in the Lord's Prayer? Pray like this. He said, pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Let's pray that God's kingdom come and that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is his kingdom? His rule, his reign, his authority, his government, the government of God come into your life, into your home, into your marriage, into, the, the, into your community, into the world. Can you get a little bit of heaven right now? But Elisha, I saw a double portion of the spirit be upon me. Of Elijah's spirit. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. <laughs> Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. Mm -hmm. See now, if if unless you would have remained in Gagal, like Elijah told him in verse 1, you see what he would have missed? See, that's why we, we gotta continue to follow Christ. You got to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. Amen. Don't remain in your gear, gal. Continue to follow Christ. Amen. Amen. Ask the Lord for a double portion of his spirit today. Yes, thank you, Lord. He's no respect of person. Amen. That's a hard thing, but nevertheless, if thou see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. Verse 11, and it came to pass, as they went as they still went on and talked, they were, they were talking, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and a horse of fire and parted them asunder. And Elijah went about where he went into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and he rent them in two pieces. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. And he went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Mm -hmm. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the water, the same water that Elijah smote on the other side of the of Jordan. Elijah, Elisha took that same mantle, smote the water, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the water, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Amen. See? He asked for a double portion. He got it. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. How they recognized that, I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. But something had changed about Elisha. Amen. Because the, the people that, uh, the prophets at Jericho said, the spirit of Elijah rested on him. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. When you go amongst, amen, uh, family and friends and co-workers and believers and unbelievers, they should be able to tell the spirit of God is upon that sister. The spirit of God is upon that brother, that deacon, amen, that man of God. The spirit of God is upon them, amen? Yes, God. And they came to meet him and, and they bowed themselves. See, they had respect. Mm -hmm. 
You remember back in the day when people had respect for the church of God and the people of God? You were, you were actually crawl. I remember going to the other side of the street when I seen Christians in churches. You had respect and honor because we, I didn't know what I was looking at, but what I saw was the spirit of God upon them. Now, we, the church has come, become so common, common with God, that we, we, we don't have that, 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 that spirit of God upon us. Amen? Amen. If the Lord, one day I'm going to preach that uh, being common with Jesus. Amen? The, the, the lack, there's a, but there's a lack of respect and honor, amen, amongst the people of God and the church of God because we become too common yeah. as the people did in his own hometown. He didn't do many miracles in his own hometown because he ain't that married boy. We know Jesus. We know his daddy. We know, we know his brother and sister. In the Bible, he did not do many miracles because of a lack of faith. They were common with him. Amen? Amen. And they bowed themselves to the ground before him. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, I have five minutes. Let's, let's go to Matthew 10 real quick. I have five minutes. Matthew 10 and verse 37. Matthew 10, 37. And the scripture reads, Jesus says here, he that loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. See, if we're going to preach Christ and him crucified, if we could, we're not going to waver between two opinions, amen, you can't love your father and mother more than Christ. You can't love your son or daughter more than Christ. You're not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and falleth after me is not worthy of me. Amen? Okay. And he that findeth Find his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Amen. And he that receives you receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. See, when someone receives a child of God, or a man or woman of God, amen, uh, and, and receive them into their midst, that's like receiving Jesus Christ Himself. And he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man reward. Amen? Amen. But we got to be able to take up our cross daily and follow him. We can't love our father and mother. We can't love our sister and daughter, our, our, our sons and daughters more than we love Christ. Amen. You can could, you could love them properly only when you love Christ properly. Look at chapter 16, Matthew 16. And verse 24. Matthew 16, very similar, but it has a different verse in it. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Let's be like Elisha. I saw a double portion. And Elisha did do twice as many miracles. God performed through Elisha twice as many miracles as he did through Elijah. He got that double portion. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. If you're going to live for yourself. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. If you deny yourself. For what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Amen? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. That's why we preach Christ. That's why we won't waver between two opinions. But Christ is coming. He's coming quickly, and his rewards is with him, and he's going to reward every man according to his works. I'm going to preach Christ, and I pray that there be some works and some fruit, some fruit that when Christ comes, he can reward you. Amen? Look at Luke 9. Luke chapter 9. And verse 57. And it came to pass that as they went up the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee where the servant thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have not 
where to lay his head. He don't have anywhere to lay his head. And he said unto him, to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said to them, let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. What are we to preach? The kingdom of God. What are we to preach? Preach Christ crucified. Mm -hmm. He's the king of the kingdom of God. Preach Christ crucified. And another also say, Lord, see, we can't keep having these excuses when it's time to preach Christ. These people have too many excuses. Uh, 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 you know, even one of them say, it's that woman you gave me. I don't know his name. <laughs> and another say, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell which are at, at home at my house. And Jesus said to them, no man having put his hand to the plow, looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. See? We preach Christ. We're not going to waver between two opinions because the Bible says, Jesus says, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back, wavering, mm -hmm. is fit for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. We want to be fit for what? Fit for the master's use. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah, we want to be fit for the master's use. Are we fit? Well, let's stay fit. Amen? For the master's use. I thank God for you this morning. I pray you heard God's still small voice. Amen. And that you have, amen, uh, you will take the word of God and be a doer of the word. Let's not waver between two opinions. But let's continue to preach Christ and him crucified. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. It's the power of God unto salvation. I thank God this morning for your presence. I thank God this morning for your attention to the word of God and to the spirit of God. Father God, we thank you in Jesus' name for the word this morning. We thank you for the demonstration of your Holy Spirit. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise this morning. Amen, amen, and amen. And I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will bring this word to our remembrance in our time of need where we can share the gospel, where we can share that hope that is within us. That we can be ready. And we thank you, Lord. That in the past, in the past you spoke to us through the prophets of old. But Hebrews 1 and 1 now tells us that you now speak to us through Jesus Christ, your only begotten son. Yeah. And we thank you for speaking to us today through your only begotten son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let the people of God say amen, amen, amen. amen.